Hello everyone, today I am covering a tilt shift lens from Nikon, the PC 19mm f4 E ED tilt shift. It's pretty highly regarded, and let's hope so considering its incredible price of about 3,400 US dollars, or about 3,100 pounds here in the UK, so it's an extremely expensive lens, but also pretty unique and valuable to the right user. It's manual focus only, although you can adjust its aperture using your camera and you do get EXIF information stored in your files. Many of you will already know what a tilt shift lens is by now, but here's a recap just in case. The shift function here, up to 12mm on this Nikon lens, enables you to correct your perspective for architecture photography, or any other kind of photography, where keeping straight lines straight is important. Yes, you can do this to your pictures in editing software too, but that will degrade your final image quite a bit, and there's nothing quite like getting it right when you're there in the field. You can also rotate this lens so that it shifts from left to right or diagonally or, or any angle in between. And another neat trick is that that shift function can be used to make easily stitchable panorama images. Just shift the lens all the way to the left, take a shot, and then to the right, take another shot, and make sure to keep the exposure the same by shooting in manual mode, stitch the two pictures together in editing for a high resolution panorama. Neat! So the shift function is pretty useful for landscape or architecture photography. The lens's tilt function allows you to literally tilt the front element of the lens, and pretty far too. This has the effect of adjusting your plane of focus. For example, here we have a close-up shot of my toddler's building blocks, and as you'd expect, the blocks further away are out of focus. If I tilt the lens just so, I can adjust the plane of focus to include the whole line of them. Well, pretty much. So that's a feature which is mainly used for product photography. You can rotate the tilt mechanism of the lens 360 degrees also for just the right focus. Because of this lens's ultra-wide angle, it's going to be much more used for architecture photography than product photography, so the shift function is going to be my key interest for this review, but it is nice to know that the tilt feature is there too if you are ever doing something really unusual and need to use it. One thing you're paying for with this Nikon lens, at least, is its build quality. It is metallic and tough, so it should put up with some good long-term use. It's based on a metal lens mount with a weather sealing gasket around the edge. It weighs about two pounds, or just under a kilogram. At the rear come the controls for the shift mechanism, and they're very well designed. On the other side, they can be locked in place, but on this side is a good-sized knob that lets you adjust it very precisely. Then, at the front, we have a similar mechanism for controlling the lens's tilt. Again, that is very well designed and easy to control, with a nice big control dial. Finally, right at the very front, there's the focus ring. It has plenty of precision there that you'll need in use, although focusing the lens isn't too difficult, it's so wide-angle. The lens has a very bulbous front element, unavoidable in such a wide-angle lens of this kind, so you can forget about using it almost any kind of filter with it. It does come with a special lens hood, made of plastic, which snaps into place reasonably well, although for peace of mind, you should probably still take care how you put it away in your camera bag. This lens does not have image stabilisation, and as I mentioned already, it's manual focus only. Overall, its build quality is pretty much everything you could ask for here. Just look at how big it is though, adapted onto my Z7 camera. Lenses like this have to be extra large to accommodate the optics for its very large image circle. Well, let's move on and look at image quality. I'm testing it by adapting it onto my Nikon Z7 here, with its full frame 45 megapixel sensor. Firstly, I'm using the lens normally, unshifted. In the middle of the image at f4, sharpness looks excellent, with good contrast. The image corners look excellent too, offering lots of resolution. Stop down to f5.6 for more brightness, and at f8, we are treated to a bit more sharpness too. 
at f11, things look a tiny bit better again, although still not quite razor sharp. It's only if you stop down as far as f16 that the image quality begins to deteriorate a little due to the effects of diffraction, so it's a very impressive performance when the lens is not shifted. Now let's shift the lens all the way up and see what happens. In the middle of the image at f4, picture quality is a lot softer now with some very clear astigmatism. There's much more horizontal resolution than vertical, which is kind of what you'd expect to be honest. In the corner that's been stretched the least though, we see a pretty sharp image. The corner that's been stretched the most is really soft, with extra darkness from vignetting. Ouch. Stop down to f5.6 and it's a little bit clearer in that difficult corner and slightly sharper in the corner that's been stretched the least as well. The middle of the image is a little sharper, but we're still seeing lots of astigmatism here. Stop down to f8 and the middle looks much better though, and f11 looks excellent there. The least stretched corner looks excellent at f11 too, and the stretched corner just okay. The most difficult corner is now showing a tiny bit more detail, but it's still mediocre. Stop down to f16 for a further tiny improvement, but you don't want to stop down any more than that because of diffraction. So as impressive as this lens's image quality was when unshifted, it does really disappoint when shifted, and anyone spending a fortune on it expecting otherwise will be disappointed. Well, let's move on and take a look at distortion and vignetting. When a lens is unshifted, we are treated to some slight barrel distortion and slightly dark corners at f4. Stop down to f5.6 and they brighten up again. Now let's shift the lens. There is a slightly stretched distortion pattern now, but nowhere near as bad as I thought it could be. There's a lot of darkness in the top of the image where it's been stretched the most. Stop down to f5.6, f8 or f11 to see that darkness slowly get pushed higher up, but it will always be there, at least just a little. So interesting results. Now let's take a look at close up image quality. This thing can focus down to less than 25 centimeters, bringing you right up to your subject. Close up image quality at the maximum aperture of f4 is fairly sharp, but contrast gets a little hazy. Stop down to f5.6 and contrast makes a return, so again avoid the maximum aperture here. Now let's take a look at how the lens works against bright lights. Its very bulbous front glass element here is surely setting it at a serious disadvantage. Here we do see a fair bit of glaring and flaring, even when bright lights are not completely in the picture frame. Finally, bokeh. Unless you're getting really close to your subject, then it's a bit of a mood point, but generally, out of focus backgrounds are rendered smoothly by this uh, Nikon lens here. Overall, testing this lens out was enjoyable for me, but its image quality was not what you'd expect for a lens at this incredibly high price point. The wide angle of 19mm was very enjoyable to use, but occasionally I did find myself wishing it was wider. This is the kind of lens that you'd be much more likely to hire out than to buy because of its incredibly high price. If you do decide to buy it, then it will work okay for you, but don't be surprised at its quite natural limitations when you're using it at full shift or full tilt on a high resolution camera. Despite what you're paying for it in that situation, this thing definitely does not perform miracles.